to my channel here i am with a yet another above and hunting video series this type of content tends to be the most popular on my channel for the last couple of years i've been receiving many messages from a lot of people who are either trying to find a new place in london or who are new to london and they found this type of videos informative and helpful so here i am yet again sharing my yet another story of finding a new apartment just for myself but the alert i found it i'm here now if you're familiar with the market in london it's crazy it is like having another full-time job you have to be on the viewings in person every day you have to be on the right most spare room if you're looking for a room zoopla every single day looking for new apartments being an agent on the phone being the first to place an offer it is a bit of mental situation to find a place in London but let me tell you it's worth it so without further ado should we just jump right into the video let's go number one was in my favorite part of London if you watched my previous video I love East London I love London fields Cambridge Hills, Columbia Road flower market Broadway market I love that area of London and this particular studio was right in the middle of everything. It was a legit five minute walk to my favorite brunch restaurant, which is Azon Coffee. It would take me 15 minutes by tube to come to my office, 20 minutes by bus. I mean, location was divine. The apartment itself was 1400, no bills included. Good price, very good price compared to the rooms that I've used before. But it was nothing special about the place. It was recently refurbished, so it was nice. But it was kind of stuffed together, not a lot of space, a lot of light. And uh, I wasn't really sure. So I needed a few days just to make up my mind because I had another flat to view. But by the time I reached out to the agent, it was already gone. That's the indication of how fast things are moving in London. The next place was in Kensington dream location honestly just thinking about living in that part of london gives me goosebumps and makes my heart beat faster you know like west london is another type of breed and uh, it's a dream to live in chelsea queue of people standing outside and waiting for their turn to see the apartment the apartment itself was bigger than the one i viewed before but it was more expensive it was 1600 no bills included knowing the council tax in Kenston, chelsea it would be a massive amount so it would be like 1900s i think all, all all the bills collected together so the minus was because it was on the, on the ground floor and it had massive windows good for the light not very good for your safety especially if i'm a single girl living in a big city you know especially like in a kind of prestige area you know people you know people there are bad people out there so i wouldn't be like 100 percent safe in that place second thing i didn't like it was mezzanine sleeping area and i drink tons of water throughout the day throughout the night as well so just the thought of me going up and down those stairs at night and i'm kind of a clumsy person as well so um yeah <laughs> so i unfortunately had to let it go because it was just way too expensive for what you get moving on to the place number three because at the time last year i was based in bermondsey and i love bermondsey i loved everything about the area so i kind of was looking for the places close to the area and elephant castle is very close to the area it's also close to the city of london where my office is it would be like a 30 minute walk to my office if i'm fast enough in not barren hills a very rare occasion <laughs> okay but uh it's a great area my friend lives there and she loves it so i went to the viewing i viewed the place it was for 1500 i looked at the place it was a disappointment honestly and i said no to an agent right there and then and i understood that bermondsey is quite popular these days and you have to be very lucky to find something 
of a good value, of a good price in that area. So I kind of switched my focus to more Battersea, Clapham, West, Southwest London area because still to this day I think Clapham, Battersea, one of the best areas to be based in London and for my future place, those are the areas I'm going to look at when finding a new place for myself. So I switched to Bottas in Clapham. Studio number four still lives rent free in my mind. It was 1450, no bills. But you know, there are those spaces where you just walk in and everything feels okay. It was a beautiful, spacious, beautiful kitchen, beautiful, like moss green color of the kitchen. It was absolutely beautiful, nothing to fault. There was a, even a park just around the corner, perfect for my rounds, perfect for summer. The area was very chill, nice, a lot of cute restaurants. There was one particular coffee shop that I really liked. So I placed an offer. The agent was Foxton's. I don't know if you ever dealt with Foxton's. Even though the place was available only in the end of August, I should pay everything upfront, first month of rent plus deposit. Back then I was going away to Portugal for God knows how long because it was only in May and I decided to go from June until essentially end of summer to go to Portugal and just be there and have the best time of my life and I did have the best time of my life. If you haven't watched those vlogs, I'll leave them everywhere so you can see the beauty of Portugal. Maybe this year for this summer you're gonna make a decision to go to Portugal because it's such a beautiful, beautiful country. So essentially I was going away. I couldn't spend all my savings on the apartment straight away because I needed to have money to travel and that was the end of this love story. When I was in Portugal, I checked on the apartment, but it was gone. And um, I don't know, some things are not meant to be right with that. So I just continued my search. The fifth place was in the same area, Clapham Junction. It was closer to the station. It was like three minute walk from the station. Whole Foods was just around the corner. So I was quite happy about that. And another surprise was it was a one bed apartment for 1500 have a security kitchen, living room, bedroom, a lot of space. It was a bit run down, but they could fix something. The ceiling was a bit yellowish, but they could paint that. The flat had a potential because of its size and it was very bright. I could make it cute and aesthetic. So at the time I was still thinking either to get this one or the one with the green kitchen, the one before. And my heart was telling me to go with the green kitchen. So I did go with the green kitchen and I had to say no to the agent of this one bed apartment. But at the time I didn't know that the agency I was dealing with was Foxton's and they would require every penny to be paid up front. I kind of lost both of these apartments, but um, it is what it is. So I wouldn't let that stop me and I continued my search. So now we are in Battersea Square, beautiful location just by the water, perfect for running, just chilling by the water. It was on a beautiful square as well with lots of cute coffee shops. Gales felt very safe. The studio itself was bright and spacious for 1400 as well. The price was amazing, but it would be unfurnished. And this girl doesn't own anything. Bed linens, that's it. And my bags and shoes and clothes. The apartment was nice and it was recently refurbished as well. But one thing about me, I'm not very good at decision making. I need to consult with the village, meaning my colleagues, my friends, my family, talk to everyone I know, get their opinions, and then come up with my own opinion. So I placed an offer and I was like sitting, you know, you've made a decision, you just sit in silence and just trying to speak with your body. I'm very spiritual as well. It didn't feel right. How much money I would spend just getting all the furniture in. It would require so much time and efforts and money just to make that place of my own. I placed an offer. The offer got accepted. The offer got accepted. I got excited, but then I was like, it's just not worth it. So I kind of let it go. And I stopped my search because my trip to Portugal was coming up. I couldn't find anything worth keeping. So I moved to Portugal for two months. Isn't it what most of adults do? Kind of like avoid decision making and then just like run 
away from your problems. I packed everything I owned, moved to storage and went traveling and being a digital nomad for a couple of months. That was amazing. Honestly, the best thing you can do when you're young and single and have zero kids, zero responsibilities. Then I came back and I started looking for flats again. So the first place I viewed once I was back to London was in Bethnal Green, again close to all my favorite markets, Office London. It had plenty of food options, coffee shops, close to my office as well. So our location was beautiful, but the street itself was way too hectic, way too busy. I felt very uneasy when I walked down the street. The place itself, it was one bedroom apartment. That was a surprise for just 1600. Very spacious for just one person, beautiful kitchen big windows, lots of natural light, the bed was insanely big, the bedroom was big. I mean, the place itself was beautiful, but I could not see myself living there on that street, so I just did not return any calls from that agent. Number eight was Battersea. I still cannot believe it was one bedroom apartment for 1600 facing Battersea Park, 30 minute walk to Chelsea, blended location. But there was a mess with the agent. I moved a few things around just to come for the viewing. I left the office early and then the agent was there. He didn't have the keys to the place. He thought the tent was gonna be at the apartment. The tent wasn't at the apartment. So we had to reschedule the viewing. We scheduled the viewing for the following Monday. But during the weekend, I viewed another place in East London and I put an offer for that one. Unfortunately, I was not able to even to see the place. Number nine. So that was the apartment I viewed during the weekend. Again, East London. The apartment was on Hackney Road, literally minutes away from my favorite coffee shops. Very, very, very close to my office in the city. And so weak for that area of London. Everything new, everything cool that is opening up is either in Shoreditch, London Fields, in Cambridge here. Went for the viewing. The outdoor space, it was massive and it would be all mine. Just imagining myself being there in summer, tanning, working out, hosting dinners, chilling, people watching. I would be there 24 seven in summer. Honestly, I'm such an outdoor girly through and through. When I saw that outdoor space, there was nothing else. The place was for 1650, so even more expensive than Bodicey. The studio itself was very tiny very tiny honestly now looking back i'm glad that didn't work out the outdoor space was even bigger than the flat itself i placed an offer there and then the next day got accepted they started the referencing process very standard practice and me being a very responsible adult i decided to go back to portugal so I booked a flight to go back to Lisbon for a month because the moving date was the end of September. It has always been a dream of mine to go away, like to prolong summer and have September somewhere abroad. And all the checks were done. I got it fully accepted. Um, they sent me the contract. I was ready to pay for the first month and the full deposit. But something else happened. I asked something I had no intention of asking. It was completely all my fault. I kind of screwed it up for me. But in hindsight, the place was tiny and it would be way too expensive for me. Uh, they returned all my money back to me. And there I was in Lisbon, in Portugal. Again, with no place to live in London. I picked myself back up and I started searching for another place and being away that made the whole process harder i had to be very picky with the apartment i would go for because i asked my friends to go for the viewings call it luck call it whatever you want but i found this place i begged my friend to go there for you and she was the first one to arrive for the viewing and i was the first one to place an offer i was very desperate at that point and uh, got accepted, did all the reference checks, all went through, paid for everything and here I am in my little loft studio apartment. That was the 10th place that I viewed, kind of virtually, and it's only 1400 and I have massive studio. It's also very spacious and very lucky. I love the loft aesthetic of this place. 
I love my kitchen. It has even a kitchen island. That's insane. I love the islands. I don't know why. But there are a lot of things I don't like about this place and it's on ground floor and I would never go for the ground floor. It's also in the middle of other two buildings and they are blocking the sunlight. I never see sun here and it's very dark in this apartment and I'm very sunshine person i need sunshine right now it's fine because we are in winter but in spring and summer i already see myself jumping up the walls itching to get that sunshine in the place so yeah i think i'll go completely mental during uh spring and summer in this place also i have construction happening outside quite noisy which is what it is i'm trying to make it as cozy as i can it was the happy ending after all i'm very grateful that is the end of this apartment hunting video. Thank you to everyone who tuned in, especially to the ones who stayed up until this very moment. I know there are not a lot of people watching this channel, but I'm very appreciative of everything. Every like, every comment, every message that you write to me on Instagram or here. And if any of you who hasn't subscribed yet and you're just feeling very generous and very like kind today, I would appreciate if you could subscribe, like, or check my other social medias, my TikTok, my Instagram. I'm very TikTok girly at the moment. And most importantly, come back I'd be so delighted to see you once again with me on this YouTube channel for another video. I wish you nothing but amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you once again. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.